Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm combining two very different style stamp sets to make one really giant, gorgeous card. I've got two new stamp sets from Colorado Craft Company that I'm going to combine into one card. I'm going to make a tag that's going to go onto the vase of flowers. And I'm using colors I don't usually use very much because I wanted to make really deep, rich, dark flowers. And the first flower, sorry, I didn't get to film that. My camera just didn't cooperate. It didn't turn itself on, but you get to see the second one. This particular stamp has lots of lines to show you where to put the dark color. And then you just work up from there on each petal, adding your mid-tone color and your lighter color, and then leaving the tips with the very lightest. And with these particular markers, I noticed I was paying really close attention to how saturated they were, meaning some of the colors, like the RV66, is much duller than I expected it to be. And I would go over it with an RV55 to make it brighter. It was really kind of an interesting experiment to see the difference in those colors. And then I had to add more of the really dark color between the two flowers to separate them. Otherwise, they look like one big flower blob. The little buds hanging off the left side have a little bit less of the dark color on them, and I'm going to let more of the tips be brighter and lighter in the overall finished flowers. But I was just really careful with how much of the duller color that I used because I wanted to make sure they stayed bright still. Usually when I'm doing a color, a, a color combination like this, I end up with like an RV02 or something to try to make the brights, but I think I'm changing my mind because these colors are really, really pretty together. The little berries and the little tiny flowers, I didn't even put any shading on them because the focus is on these big flowers. And then I used two different greens to color the leaves that are on this particular stamp set. So the coloring on these is really easy if you let the lines in the stamp that are drawn in there tell you where the shading is on each leaf. The vase, which is actually a perfume jar, this is a perfume bottle stamp is the name of it, uh, you could make this look like it's a solid vase so that it doesn't have clearness, clearness? Yeah, to it. But there is the little pump for the perfume bottle showing in here, so I decided to make it clear. And I threw in a bunch of grays, but I also used some of the pinks because I wanted to make it look like there were some reflection from those colors in the flowers into the vase itself. But I wanted to keep it looking like it was glass because it does have that little, I don't even know what the thing is called inside of a perfume jar, but that is showing. But I also realized as I was coloring this that that might be there, but wait a minute, where are all the flower stems? <laughs> There's no flower stems in this one. So there you go. The flower stems would then need to be drawn in yourself. So I took the two greens that I already used in the leaves above and kind of combined them to make some of these stems hanging down in here. The stamp set has a bunch of sentiments. You can put some into the little square label on the, the this little jar, but you can also do what I'm going to do, which is to add a tag and make it just a little bit different. The coloring got, it, it felt really heavy on the outside of, of the jar. Like I got too much of that really dark red in there. So I just went over it with a white pencil. The white pencil, you don't want to go over again necessarily with Copic. You want the white pencil to be the last thing you add. So be aware of what point you decide to go in with any kind of pencil additions to your card. I did this on the 110 pound cardstock. So I'm gonna use it to put underneath of my little tag images, because I stamped them all in little circles. Uh, the 110 doesn't bleed through a lot, but it bleeds through a little, as you can see. When you put a lot of thick, heavy color on, the 110 even will bleed. But that's a good thing, because Copic marker blends best through the fibers of the paper. If your paper is so thick, that it doesn't bleed through, then you're not getting the best blending because it's not 
digging into the fibers and blending with the other colors that are there. It's just sitting on the top surface. And with a lot of the thicker papers, I used to get a lot of shiny color, so I don't use those anymore. I just use the, the Nina's, the 80 and the 110. So I was testing out these different little tag things that I had made. I'm going to use those for a, a project for my Toastmasters Club, I think. But I was trying to figure out which one I wanted to use for this, and I chose the cactus. And I got out my Hybrid Technica pen, because I wanted to add a little bit of fancy detail to this, because the elegance of the floral stamp is so high, and then the cuteness of this one is, is so cute that I, I wanted to bring them together a little bit. So adding that bit of a border really helped. And then I took two different adhesives. One was just a tape runner that I used on part of it and then the dimensional adhesive on the other. So it almost feels like it's leaning at an angle away from the, the jar itself. I next took my pokey tool, which I know is not the official name of it, but I call it the pokey tool. And I poked three holes to run some twine through. And I wanted it to go through the, the card so it looks like the twine is going around the bottleneck and then hanging down to where the tag is. And to get it to feed through, I just kind of did some shoving using the pokey tool to shove it through one side and then across to the other. And then I brought both ends up from the back side through the tag. So I was trying to figure out how to, how to do this so that it would end up looking like there was a, a piece going across and then the tag was hanging from that. And then I just tied a little knot from it. So it's more like a little Y shape and then tied a bow on it and pulled it tight. So it was a really super tiny bow. You can put a dot of glossy accents on the knot in order to hold it in place if you're worried it'll come untied. But the card is a five by seven because this stamp is huge. I debated whether to cut it in half and make two cards out of it like I've done with some of the really giant stamps from this stamp company because they do make really big ones. But I decided to just make a really big card for this one instead and put that little cute tag on it. So the sentiment on it is handwritten, by the way, because I didn't leave room on my card to put a stamp sentiment. So there you go. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you again very soon. Supplies are all linked in the doobly-doo as well as over on the blog. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. Bye.